This week on the Fab Forums, we're gonna modify a fuel cell for the Bibster, and we're gonna attempt to bend some 6061 T6 aluminum tubing in the roll bar bender. So I was really conflicted on whether I wanted to modify an existing fuel cell or just build one 100% from scratch. I mean, I felt like it was pros and cons either way. Uh, what I ended up doing was settling with just modifying the fuel cell that I bought. So what I did is I talked about it in previous videos and I was gonna make a custom fuel cell for this thing. I actually got the materials to do that. But, um, maybe much quicker for me and cost effective if I just bought one and modified it slightly. So that's kind of what I'm considering doing. Um, I've actually purchased a fuel cell. I'm still not 100% sold on the fact that that's what I want to do. So let me kind of show you what I got. So I'll kind of show you the pros and cons behind, I guess, both methods. So this one was just a standard fuel cell. It was a filler. It's got a cap in it. It came with a uh, fuel level sending unit. Only thing that doesn't make any sense is that at full drop, this thing was only like half of the fuel cell, which doesn't really make any sense. I think if I use this, I'll probably extend it out. It's got two uh, vents up top or returns, and it had basically the same thing on the bottom. So the good thing about this is that the whole thing was like 70 bucks. Um, it's got pretty nice welds on it. I mean, I say pretty nice, probably better than what I could do. So, I mean, it's a pretty solid unit. I haven't really seen any issues with it so far. The problem with this unit though, I've already kind of removed a lot of stuff. The first thing is I was gonna run this all-in-one Holly uh, submersible pump unit. So I like this unit. I like the fact that it's got an in-tank pump. It's gonna stay nice and cool for street driving and that sort of thing. It has a filler on top. So, and this thing just unscrews. You can basically fill right through there. It has an outlet and a return. Everything built in. It's like the all-in-one, uh, which is what I like versus like an external pump. You know, on something like this, you have an external pump. They're, they tend to overheat if you do a lot of street driving. Uh, these pumps are also very inexpensive to replace, the Walbro style. And this one's totally adjustable, so I can like, you know, drop this thing down as low as I need to, put a filter on it, and I'm ready to go. So that was why I chose this unit. I was hoping that I could basically buy a fuel cell and that the bolt holes would line up um, with this pump. But that's not the case. So that is issue number one. Issue number two with this particular setup is that the height is right and the depth, the height is right, the width is right, but the depth is a little too deep. So on the Bibster, I can only get away with maybe, uh, let's see what this is. So 12 and a half inches, I could probably only get away with about 10 and a half inches. Uh, so I need to chop two inches off of this thing, which is not a huge deal. That's kind of what I anticipated when I bought it. I mean, I knew the dimensions of this tank. I was like, you know what? I can just chop off two and a half inches of this. I don't need the sump section. I'm gonna run an in-tank piece. When I cut off the two inches, it's actually technically gonna kind of set this pump head back some, which is what I want. I got the sanding unit that I can modify slightly. And uh, yeah, I mean, I just felt like it was kind of a a win-win on this on this particular build. I could set it right in there, be good to go. Most of the materials already done. A lot of the welding's already done. All I'd have to do is cut it, weld on a new section here, redo the tabs on the side versus on the back, and I'd be ready to rock and roll. The problem is, I guess, that I could cut off the two inches, 
but I'm still gonna have an issue with the, this section lining up. I've got all these uh, holes that are already in here that are kind of already drilled. So a fix for that would maybe do like a, a beauty ring style setup. I don't know, make it look, try to make it look as cool as possible. And then weld that piece on. And then basically put a new hole in here that matches this unit. So really that's the kind of struggles with a build like this is like, you know, everything has got to be modified and everything takes time. Even when you buy a tank, I mean, it's got to be modified to fit. So I just got to figure out what I want to do. Do I want to bend up on my own tank and, and weld the whole thing myself or do I want to try to chop this one up and uh, make it into what I need it to be? So this particular tank is, I think was an eight gallon and I did the math on it. If I cut two inches off, I think it only reduces it down to like maybe six and a half gallons. So it'd still be plenty of fuel for this thing. I mean, I don't see any long road trips in this one. I mean, this is the fab forms, right? Not the buy stuff bolted together forms. So, I mean, I guess I gotta cut it apart. Well, we're going back now. I, mean, I guess there is, but let's see what she looks like. So it's sit about like that. Which is about what I had in mind. All right, well, I think I got it cut down where I want it. Made a heck of a mess that I need to clean up before I start welding, but cut the tabs off. I'll probably go back and fill weld these just to kind of reinforce them a little bit. The good thing is that this side won't be seen. Don't really need the sump anymore, so I don't know. I cut the bungs out. So I could use them on something else. I guess, I mean, there's still enough room. I guess I could put them back in there if I wanted to. The only problem is, is the tag brackets come back right up to this fuel cell. So those can't really be there. But yeah, I don't think those could really be there. I guess I could put them under that tubing back there. Let's see, we can take this back plate and see. I guess technically I could hang them down like that. I don't know what I would, I don't know what I would do with them. If I ever wanted to drain the fuel, I guess I could drain it. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. 
I either got to do that or I have to weld these bad boys solid. But anyway, everything lines up pretty well. I kind of left some of that old weld on there just to give me a little extra material to work with. Not the best aluminum welder. So a little extra material only helped me out. Good thing you won't see all this stuff. And then you can see that is, uh, that's what I cut out of it. So it's probably like maybe an inch and a half there, but it was two inches. I just used some two inch 3M tape to kind of measure it out. So let's, uh, I guess I need to figure out what I'm gonna do with those bungs before because we can weld those from the backside. And then we can get welding this tank back up. Let's take it. Whoops. That wasn't supposed to happen. So there's the new fuel cell. Um, I feel pretty good about the welds as far as leaking goes. I mean, obviously I need to kind of, uh, I need to fill it and check leak, check the leakage on this thing. But other than that, it's not the prettiest things I've ever done. I'm kind of disappointed in that, but you know, it is what it is. So I had to actually make, so the holes, the circle and the holes that were in this thing for the original uh, cap um, was actually bigger and they didn't line up with these holes. So what I had to do was cut it out larger and then actually make a filler plate that goes in here so then I could make a new hole with new bolt holes I just got it sitting in here now um I still gotta kind of finish it off but you get the gist there's a gasket that'll go under this and then right here is the extra filler. It's the filler uh, float. So this little doodad. 
the cool thing about this is even though the mounting holes are there, you can kind of clock this thing any way you need to. So I'll probably clock it a little bit sideways like that so it clears this pump. The only downfall is that when it comes, it's only like half the tank deep. So the float empty is like right here, which don't make no sense to me. So I'm gonna probably lengthen this rod where it's closer to accurate. And then uh, get that thing sit in there. Once it's in, I kind of tie these wires together with those wires. Try to do something pretty neat and clean and got uh there's the return so i'll do like a 90 return probably there's the outlet so i'll do the same with this so they'll kind of go through pretty nice and clean up through here um i'll probably use one of these as a vent so come off i'll probably do like a spiral spiral vent um probably plug the other side then down below it's got an actual sump setup, so if I ever want to do a sump setup, I could. Right now, though, I'm kind of torn. I don't really like it hanging out. So I'm actually thinking real hard about eliminating those or doing something else. Uh, those, those, that sump kind of messes with the height of the tank and the clearance as far as my jack point and that sort of thing. You can kind of see it. So it looks kind of cool hanging out below this. The only thing I might do is maybe do some like one inch tube that comes off like this. Maybe do my jack point underneath it. It'll kind of give it that that uh, diffuser look. So I don't know, I gotta figure that out. But yeah, a lot of comments about this thing being, a lot of uh, Ford Pinto comments on this thing. Um, I'm assuming they're, they're referring to like the fact that the Pintos used to catch on fire. And I don't know the exact reason the Pintos used to catch on fire. Uh, I don't know if there's like exhaust close to the fuel tank. So like in a rear, a rear collision, you know, the, the gas got on the exhaust and it caused it to ignite or, or whatnot. But the thing about this build, for one, it's more of a piece of art. Functional piece of art, like get out and kick around. I want it to be as safe as it can, but you know, I'm limited on space. So I just don't have a whole lot of options. I mean, I can't put the tank under the car. I can't put the tank anywhere back here that's not going to be vulnerable. I can put it in the cowl area, but I mean, what's better? In the cowl up next to the driver and passenger or back here? And the way I look at it, like every car, every Fox body that's ever been made, the fuel cell is literally in the same spot. Like it's, it's right there. I mean, you can see that or not, but that is the fuel cell that you see right there between the rear end and the rear bumper. And for those that say there's more between the fuel cell and the rear bumper and the Fox bodies, then say the Bibster, I mean, there's more, there's like eight inches of space, but there's no more metal. There's nothing, there's like one bumper and that's it on these things. So, like that is the fuel cell right there. It comes back, the only thing between that tank and the back of this bumper is literally just the bumper itself. Uh, it's only sheet metal because under this, there's nothing. So, I mean, it's not, I mean, it's kind of a null and void argument because you're comparing apples to oranges. It's not, it's not the same thing, but yeah, I don't have any good options. One thing I may do for safety though, is I may have that tank bladdered. So I may put a bladder in it where if it was in a rear impact situation, the tank itself could crumple and fail, but the bladder, the bladder inside of it may not actually still hold fuel. The other thing too that it's hard to convey to a lot of folks is that the chassis and the tubing that I'm making the Bibster out of is the same stuff that like nitro funny cars are made out of, right? That stuff is made to 
withstand crashes at like 300 miles an hour. Um, it's the reason they put the same tubing in these cars to make them safer. So, I mean, that doesn't make it foolproof, but it's not gonna give like, you know, like these cars are designed. These cars are designed cheap. All of them are, they're designed to crumple, which makes the impact easier on the driver. Uh, but it's not gonna be as strong as a bunch of crow molly. So anyway, take that for what it's worth. Like I said, this is more of a functional piece of art. It's more of a novelty item. It's not made to be daily driven, super safe, never get in an accident, never catch on fire. Like I just, I'm just hoping nobody rearranges me. That being said, it is super tight. So this is what it laid out, so keep that in mind. But um, I mean, that rear end is right there I'll probably shave off these lugs on this thing and may even extend these real bars just a little bit maybe like a quarter of an inch put like a quarter of an inch spacer in there potentially it could do two things for me if I put some kind of spacer in there uh, I could do like a double shear setup where if it does get rear impacted that thing shears and it does have like a little bit of give in there um, you know, a quarter of an inch here and down there will give me a little more clearance here. It's going to make this thing stick out just a little bit, but not enough really to matter. The current calculations on this tank is six gallons. I know it looks pretty small, which six gallons is not really that much. But for what this thing's going to be doing, I mean, I don't plan on driving this thing to the beach or wherever. I mean, it's just a little cruiser the most, I would think. So six gallons, I think, will be plenty sufficient. And because I'm not running an intercooler on this thing, I'm um, gonna do some alcohol, uh, probably like meth water injection on it. And so I may build a separate fuel cell just for that that's gonna go up here into the cowling with a pump and everything here. So that's the plan. I'll just pipe it right into the induction tube. It'll just kick on during I'm not gonna run high boost on it, but it'll just kick in under boost. Uh, kind of cool that intake charge off, just to minimize what's going on up front. So, still gotta figure out these brake lights. I don't know if I've mentioned it, maybe in past videos, but I think these things are gonna sit in here like this. So I'll do some kind of, uh, gonna build some kind of plate that kind of goes in here. It's flat. And then the actual sheet metal that goes over it, it'll just basically be an opening. This thing will kind of sit back in here like this. That's the plans. I've got two of these. These will do brakes and blinker. So it's a three wire setup. Kind of want to kind of tuck these away where you don't really notice them until they're on. But I think that's going to look pretty cool. They're actually the, basically the perfect width. So now that that's pretty much squared away, I'm pretty happy with the tank. Uh, got some things I need to iron out, how I'm gonna mount it in there. Gotta add some tabs to it. So the original tabs that I got off of that thing, I'll clean those up, probably put them back on once I figure out how I'm gonna mount it. But uh, all in all, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I mean, that tank right there was 70 bucks and it came, you know, Let's see, where'd I do that thing? Anyway, it came with a filler that was in it that I've still got somewhere. I do that thing. One thing on my list is to do a full shop cleaning. No ideas, but regardless, I have a filler. You know, it's just the standard fuel cell style filler, like you half turn, then you kind of halfway unscrew it and it pops out. Um, my thought process is that I can reuse that thing when I build the custom tank up front for the ALK, the ALK injection up front. So wherever it is, I'm gonna keep it. I'll reuse it. So that 70 bucks goes towards that. It's got its own uh, fuel level sending unit, which is nice. Had all the bungs already in it. I mean, the aluminum, and most of the work was already done, even though it was still a good bit of work. Um, I feel like for like 70 bucks, you can't, 
can't hardly beat that. All right, so next on the agenda, we're gonna kind of jump around a little bit. Next thing I wanna do is uh, the radiators sitting right up in here. If you haven't seen it before, it's gonna be a rear radiator section. Got the cowling coming to each side. That's how we're gonna get air to it. And it'll have, I've got dual fans that are pullers that'll, that'll go up under this here. But the way that this one's set up, you got one outlet there and your water inlet is over here. So what I want to do is I want to run aluminum tubing right up the firewall or right up the uh, trans tunnel here on both sides and kind of just run it to the end. And what I'll do is I'll use probably rubber 90s that bring it with some aluminum that kind of bring it up and tie it in on either side. So like I mentioned in the last video, I've already got some tubing. So I've got some lengths of inch and a half tubing. Uh, the only thing about this tubing was that it was, the alloy on it is 6061 T4, which potentially could be very brittle and may not bend. I don't wanna bend it a whole lot and I've already got one stuck in the bender over here. Uh, I don't wanna bend it a whole lot. Really the only place I need to bend it is right here in the center of the trans tunnel. So just kind of imagine it coming straight through here and then right there where that tubing bends, I think I want to put a little bend in it. I don't know if you can see that. Like right there, I want to put a little bend in it uh, just to kick it out around the bell housing. And then what I'll most likely do, if there's enough tubing, I might bend it back straight, but if there's not, chances are um, I'll use a coupler and then get some more tubing. And the idea is that I need to bring it up here and tie it in here on this side. Have it go right down through there and then it's got to tie in up here on that side. So, um, got some struggles ahead of me as far as making all that kind of route through there and it look good, but I think it's doable. Let's take a look at the couplers I got. Oh, there it is. So that's that piece that came off the top of that tank. So I'll just reuse this in the Alki setup. I don't know how much these are, but I mean, for 70 bucks and you get to keep this kind of stuff for something else. Seems pretty legit to me. So anyway, I ordered a bunch of these and they're just silicone. Like these are all 45, so I got 445s, 490s. These things were pretty cheap. A couple bucks a piece, I think. If I need to, I'll order some more. But with those eight pieces plus the aluminum I got, it'll be a really good start and kind of see where I'm at as long as that thing bends. Um, if it doesn't bend, I may have to maybe pie cut it and weld it up or just use something like that. I'd like to limit the amount of silicone I use, just it's just more chances of having issues. So let's do that. Let's see if, uh, see if we can bend. So I did kind of, a, I mentioned it in a past video and asked for your guys' advice of whether I could bend it in my bender. So this is just a, uh, JD squared style bender. I think this is actually the 105 Pro Tools 105 or whatever they call it. Basically the same thing. Um, I had asked if I could bend that exact alloy. And it was funny because I had half and half. I had half of you said, nope, you can't do it. It'll crack. There's no way. I've had the other half say, yeah, we do it all the time at work. And I'm sure probably both are true to an extent. Those folks that say that it can't work, they're probably bending plate versus tube maybe. Um, and the plate will crack and there's probably some guys that are bending tube, I don't know. We're just gonna try it out and see if I crack it. No biggie, I gotta order any more anyway because I'm not gonna have enough to get the whole job done. So, gonna take a couple measurements on the Bibster, see exactly where these bends need to go uh, how many degrees of bend we need to start off with. 
We're gonna throw one of these bad boys in the bender and see if we can make it happen. Ten. Twenty. Hey, what's it right there? You survived. All right, so that one worked too, 22 and a half degrees. So for anybody that's wanting to bend some aluminum tubing in a uh, JD squared, or this is the 105 HD style bender, basically the same, um, you can do at least 22 and a half degrees. Uh, you get a little kink in it, which is probably what saves the material, to be honest with you. And this is, just for reference, this is, let's see if we can get it, this is uh, Alcoa 6061 T6, what well, says T700, I don't know if that's, I don't know what that is, seamless, inch and a half uh, 049 wall so there you go if you may do a, may put this in like a little separate video if you're looking to bend if you have questions about bending aluminum tubing in a roll bar style bender um, I will say you can get away with at least 22 and a half degrees I would think you could probably keep going. I think what's happening is that this alloy is so strong that instead of cracking the outside of it, it actually just puts a wrinkle on the inside of it. Um, which for fluid transfer, for coolant transfer, I'm A-OK -okay with. Now, like I said, this I just bent it, so it hasn't been through a real, a real world test. Well, I, haven't, I haven't had coolant through it. I haven't put it through heat. I haven't put it through pressure, but just based on what I'm looking at, it doesn't look like it's fatigued any on the outside. It just looks like it just wrinkled it on the inside in order to, to accomplish that bend. So there you go, for what it's worth, it is what it is now. I just gotta figure out how to fit it in this bad boy. All right, looks much better. Can't really see it, but so take my word for it. Things bent right up in there, nice and tight. So now I just need to duplicate the other side, which is not really duplicatable. It's a little bit different measurements, different degree of bend, but you get the idea. I just gotta make another one. So the measurements for the other side are 43 inches. We need to go 16 degrees so i'll measure this out clean this tube up a little bit throw it in the bender see what we got looking good i got some hanging out at the back it's nice and tucked so what i'll probably do is make some tabs that come off these tubes maybe tie into these or maybe tied in down here and uh stays off the tranny 
I mean, it's tight, but it, it fits. Everything looks good. Just give me some, give me some room to do the 90 degree kick ups right there, or 45, depending on what side it is. I think this side maybe just a 45, or maybe you go 90 up. I don't know. I'll have to figure that out. And same thing over here. This thing, thing looks nice and tight. It's off the trainee, although it's really close. Right now I have this rear section uh, rubber mounted, so it's got like a poly bushing on the trans. I mean the motor and stuff is solid, but the uh, trans mount is like a poly bushing. Um, Shouldn't give much, but it may give enough right here for it to rub. So that may need to go to a solid mount and potentially I could even raise that tranny up just a smidge. Uh, I mean, as far as the shifter goes, I mean, it kind of needs to come up just a little bit anyway. So that'll work out good. Can't really come up too much just because the front is all solid already and all that's kind of factored in as it is. But you can see coolant tubing just comes right up through here. It kind of terminates right here under what would be the starter. And if I remember correctly, I shouldn't have any issues with the starter because I think the starter solenoid itself is on top of the starter. So, and I'm running a mini starter, I've already got it. So we're good to go there. Now I just gotta figure out how to connect this up to the top. I'm sure it'll just be a combination of those couplings and a couple pieces of aluminum, a bunch of hose clamps. Probably do like T-bolt clamps just to make it look better. But yeah, it'd be cool to get this, uh, get all the cooling stuff set up. What I may do as well is put a vent up here on the front. Um, part of the struggles of a setup like this is getting all the air out of it. So if I do some kind of vent setup right up here on top of the intake, one of these will have to be for like a coolant sensor for the standalone ECU. But the other one I don't really need, so I could put a vent set up in one or the other, and I could kind of crack that thing open as I feel the radiator from the rear. It allowed all that air to kind of escape out the top of this thing, and then as soon as it starts to bubble water, close the vent, fill it the rest of the way up, and should be ready to rock and roll. As you can see, it worked beautifully. I have no complaints and no fears whatsoever. And the fatigue or non-fatigue of this material, it looks great. And you'll probably see more of this in the future as I bend some more of it. I've actually ordered some more. Gonna make a couple extra pieces to kind of bridge the gap and try to minimize the amount of couplings that I use to put this thing together. Once I get that cooling system kind of figured out and pretty much done, it's gonna be time to move on to the hydraulics. I'd started the hydraulics at one point in the past. Gonna kind of revisit that. I've, I've changed my mind as far as tanks go. The biggest issue I'm running into in this whole build is really space. I just don't have that much space to work with in this thing, so I have to be very, very careful about space. As a matter of fact, I'm probably gonna have to move these rear hydraulic cylinders, maybe redesign the cantilever setup just slightly, and uh, gain me a little more space back there. I'd also posted something about the intake in the past. We did a 3D printed version of what we thought we were gonna do in billet. Um, that's even changed a little bit since you've probably seen that. Got something else in the works. Soon you will see that. Uh, there'll be a couple videos on that whole deal. Anyway, as always, thank you for joining me. See you guys in the next episode. Go do work, son.